Well, welcome to the Mendota Ranch. I'm Jason Abraham. I'm the, I'm the owner and the inventor of the product that we're going to be talking about today is Brush Bullet. And I've got Andy Holloway uh, here with me. Andy, tell them, tell them kind of your part of the story. So I grew up here in the Texas Panhandle. I'm the county extension agent uh, for agricultural and natural resources here in Hemphill County, our county seat's Canadian, Texas. Uh, we're just out west of Canadian, about what, Jason, 12 or yeah, 15 yeah, miles crow flies, yep. out here on the Mendota Ranch. And uh, this is a real typical uh, Canadian River Breaks ranch that would be typical to a lot of the Panhandle, particularly to this area of the Panhandle. Jason has discovered a method and a, a new way of treatment that individually treats these trees. And it's absolutely fascinating what he's developed, what he's patented, and, and the way he has put together a strategy to get rid of these uh, juniper. So Jason, let's just start off talking about the numbers for a minute. You know, we just had our beef conference, yep. and our theme was it's all about the numbers. All about the numbers, yeah. Talk about just the normal tree as as what research has found to be the consumption of water from that one tree yeah you know most of these trees here you see from the they're nine to ten foot tall those are 30 gallons a day during the growing season down to probably a, a, a five to ten gallon you know day um and and you know what i was telling you at the conference was is in one tank of gas on the helicopter which give me three hours in a helicopter I can treat these trees, and I've just treated these, and I wanna show you some of the bullets here in a minute. But in one tank of gas, I can take out, I can treat 3,000 trees. So you figure if I successfully treated 3,000 trees, and you go on the low end, you're talking 10 gallons a day, so it's 30,000 gallons of water a day. And then you figure the growing season, our growing season is 200 days here maybe. And so you're talking about six million gallons that I did with uh, one tank of helicopter gas. This is one of the trials we're in. I just treated these trees about a week ago. And uh, ever since the beef conference, it's been raining about every day. Yeah. So, But I wanted to show you the accuracies, uh, the accuracy of the uh, aerial application, IPT, which, is, which has never been done before until me. Um, the bullets are have they're starting to dissolve pretty good. It takes about an inch plus of water to of rain to dissolve them. It depends on how the rain comes and all that, and it depends on where it's land. But that's important to protect the grass because we don't want to do any more grass damage than we have to. Well, if you put liquid down as soon as it gets a little moisture on it, well then it pancakes out and it just smokes this freaking ground. And we've all seen that. Yeah. And you won't see it here. We're going to have to go to a cedar tree, to a mesquite tree that I've overtreated to find any grass damage. One of the things that I think is important for the listeners and the people that watch this is to know first of all how safe this product is. Yeah, we got we got EPA labeling the other day. Um, first, we're the first part of, of April. Now we're just now the state labelings are just now starting to roll in. And this product's been around for 45 years. I mean, it's safe. It's as safe as it's as safe as Kimmel can get, Absolutely. you know, and, and that, and that's what I was after. Cause a lot of people don't want to do the applicator's license and, and ranchers and stuff like that. They want to be able to go out there and do it. Uh, On top of that, you and, and your partners have developed some technology now using drones. Yeah. Essentially I've solved the drone problem with, uh, Five, with a with an applicator and two pounds of herbicide in the applicator, you're talking five pounds total. That's enough to treat two or three hundred trees. And the problem with drone people are, is these drone people they all want to try to carry 25 pounds and they can and they can for five minutes. But we need 25 minutes of run time with five with uh, five pounds of, of payload. So the drones are the future. They're not there yet, and, and believe me, we're working on it. Yep. But right now the helicopter. At, IPT with the helicopter is golden. I mean, we're, we're sitting here on the ground, dropping these right in the tree, getting the GPS coordinates. We need, we, we're working on different GPSs, but a GPS coordinates to get every tree that we, we apply. And it's accurate and it works fast and I'm fast. I mean, you're gonna have to really get, you, th these drone guys are gonna have to step their game up to keep up with me in the helicopter, but I'm talking about, I'm charging a thousand, if I charge max max rate, $1,000 an hour for a helicopter, 
and I fly for three hours, and then and I do 200 acres, and it takes 24 pounds of herbicide to do that. You're talking about only $23.40 an acre to treat all these trees. That's like nothing compared right. to what we're normally used to paying. We're normally, you're talking about $200 an acre. If I had somebody hired to come squirt these, and they're just going to squirt these little ones. They're not going to get the ones on top of the calf rock. Right. And, and then the, the mechanical, you're talking $500. Now, we do have a lot of trials that we want to do. And I want to do a lot of trials, and a lot, and, and I, I, it takes a lot of money to do a lot of trials. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of labor, and and we want to do all those, but we do, we we might reach out for some help for some trials. And I think that's where the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension <laughs> Service, as well as the Texas A&M AgriLife Research, uh, can come along yeah. and assist you. Yeah. And not only. Uh, <clears throat> does that help maybe in some of the costs, but it validates. It's it's like a third party validation system. Yep. You know, so Texas AgriLife would be a, a great fit for us to help us do some trials and move forward. And, and any other kind of help you can give us, um, because this is this is big. This is way bigger than me and you, and it's way bigger than Texas too. A amen to that. So. Anyway, well, let's get to the right, trees let's look at some and, stuff. and you tell us uh, kind of what we're looking at. Right, so, Andy, I treated all these trees last week. And so what you're seeing is, of course, no grass damage here. We're on the downhill side. Now, look under there and you tell me if you see, see where you see the balls. Right up around the tree line, yep. the water line of the tree. Okay, Andy, so these trees here, these bullets, you see four of them right here. They, I was flying when I when I applied these. So you did this with your helicopter? I did this with the helicopter, and they've had about three quarters of an inch of rain on them. And they'll dissolve faster in deep grass. If they're on hard ground, they dissolve slower. And that's important. That's real important that they dissolve slow so they don't just run and just smoke your grass down the hill. They stay, the, the herbicide stays where it's supposed to. So if you can think of like liquid Velpar is like a funnel. It spreads out and it, as it gets deeper, it goes narrow. Well, my product is just opposite. It, go, it starts in a little funnel and as it goes down, it slowly it goes wider. Wow. So that's where, we, that's where we're really controlling these trees like we're supposed so to be. So the leaves of the trees actually help get the bullet right where it needs to be. Yeah, because the, the leaves are all going like this. Yep, that's pretty awesome. A tree like I've got like one bullet there, one there. So this tree here is six plus feet tall. So each bullet is designed for a three foot of tree. So you know two foot, two two bullets. I might have hit a third one over here too. I always hit at least one bullet for a three foot of tree. Now if it's a short tree and a wide tree, then I go by width too. But I'm here. I'm hovering over the helicopter. I'm not going to un under treat it. The worst thing you can do is under treat it. But the neat thing about, if you got Velpar on the ground, if you just put liquid and you squirt it over here, it only kills half this tree. Yep. If you got the bullets and you drop them right in the tree. It's gonna get the whole tree. That's the whole tree. When you dispatch the tree from the roots up, well then it's like giving a tree cancer. It starts dying from the inside out. It yep. dissolves fast. Yep. Like if I, if I were to cut this tree down and lay it down right here, it would lay here for 30 years. Yep. But if you leave it here with, with the herbicide in there, you'll see it and it'll just split in about three different ways and it'll be laying on the ground and it'll, it'll be nothing in uh, you know four or five years. We had a big wildfire here back, well we've had a bunch yeah, of wildfires bunch here of over decades of time, but the last really big one was in March of 2017. The brush bullet, by killing these trees, helps make a wildfire situation yeah. less potent. Oh, oh, absolutely! Yeah, when, when, once they shed, once they shed this, they're, they're not going. To, they're no longer a fire hazard. Yep. And that's going to happen within within the first growing season of this. There's a lot of trials we want to do too. Is about treating these trees in the winter time. We put this herbicide down in the wintertime and let the herbicide move through the grass, through the ground, and then come springtime, these trees take up their first drink of water. Well, it's a it's a it's, deadly they're one. They're done. Yeah, yep. we we send them to we send them back to where they came from. So this tree here is kind of what you're going to start seeing after all oh, after treatments being about two months after a rain. So it's got you know it's it's not going to do anything to it rains. So well, I, I want to take you up and around to the other side of the pasture. I got some mesquite trees. And I, and I try to purposely damage the grass there. So I want to take you and let's go look yeah, at it. Yeah, let's go look at that demonstration. Okay. This is a great example. So when I hit these trees like this, 
uh, like a mesquite tree, I'll, I'll double and triple dose them just because these mesquite trees are really hard. But if you can kind of look here, you can almost imagine every bullet is about a frying pan of grass damage. And so I can see crusty there, and then there's one there, and then there's maybe one right here. I bet there's another one right here. So I'd call this, I probably, I would probably hit this thing with four, tr full, four bullets, but I wanted you to see that's all you're going to get. That's yep. all the grass damage you're going to get. Right. Just because it dissolves so slow. Yep. And that leads me up to the next thing I want to show you. There's Good. another thing that I want to show you because if I can do this and I'm just, and I'm just getting a little, if, if every bullet is only like this much, well, what if you have cedar trees you can't even walk through? Right. So what if you just say, okay, I put I put a bullet every five foot. I grit them. You just blanket it. I just gr blanket it, grit it. I, and I know I'm going to get me a frying pan every five foot. Yep. I'll take that. All right, Andy, so this is where we were doing some trials. Six pounds over here, we're trying to figure out what's too much and what's not. So this was just spread with a spreader bucket. We did 10 acres over here of six pound acre, and it did some grass damage. There's no doubt about it. But this five pounds goes this way, and then four pounds, we got a gap of green, and then four pounds. Now I want to take you in here and let's go look at what's inside this five pounds. So this is kind of for the land that that is just so thick, you're, you can't even ride a horse through, you know? Right. It's just too, it's just too much. The, tree, the trees are gone and the grass is still here. Yeah, that I, I was just struck by first how many dead trees. And then just as soon as we stepped out, all I could see was green grass growing. And you treated this mass treated. So all this I'm, grass got treated just like the trees. Just like the trees. And look how much grass is still living. And that's five pounds. Yeah, that's five pounds. That's one helicopter pass. And that's me flying at 50 miles an hour going 90 foot wide. Wow. I mean, that's I'm, you're talking about it took me seconds to do this. Yes. Seconds. That's really a beautiful trial or demonstration yes. because that strip and then you've got control on either side yeah. to compare yep. to that strip. And uh, that that's phenomenal. Yeah, it is. It's just not cedar trees. Yep. We do rush and all of salt cedars and everything else. Yep. So I'd like to, if we got time, let's run back to headquarters yeah. and let's go look at some, at some Russian olives. Let's go there. see those Russian olives because that is huge for our rivers and the salt cedars and the Russian olives. There's no telling how much water they're stealing. And look at that. Yucca. Yeah, it's dead. What? <laughs> Yucca. It's gone. Root and all. <laughs> Praise, Isn't that not the greatest thing in the world? Praise the Lord. That's oh my perfect. Gosh, I hate the yucca too. All right, Andy, here's what I'm wanting to show you. These last summer, I come in here and I shot all these Russian olives. You see I missed one. But these elm trees, I, I mean, I don't love elm trees, but I don't hate elm trees, so I want to keep them. Sure. So I, I picked around them, but also what I wanted to show you is look down here. What do you see all down in there? Look at that grass. All, and all those, look at the baby cottonwoods too. Yeah. The baby cottonwoods are everywhere <clears> in there. So being able to zero that herbicide in and it's, it not leaching all over the world is what I'm so out here in the panhandle, the cottonwood is the only native tree to the Texas panhandle. Right. That's what and I so heard. those baby cottonwoods are probably coming because you've eliminated the competition. Yep. They're extremely easy to control yeah. with with the herbicide. I mean extremely easy. So you look at the Canadian River, like all them Russian olives out there, I yeah. could smoke all of them. You know, and you can get around pretty close. And you don't have to worry. Look, I mean, we're close. These, right. I got some more Russian olives right, right four feet away. Yeah. And so that's important to be able to. Um, so you basically taken a scalpel. Exactly. And sculptured the ones you wanted to eliminate and left the good trees that you wanted to keep. Yes. And this is also a low area where, where a lot of water sits. So if it's going to spread anywhere, it's going to spread here. Well, Andy, I appreciate you coming out looking well, at this. Well, thank we you. We spent the day looking at a lot. Well, you've seen a lot of stuff. I know you kind of need to go home and digest it, but yes, sir. it got kind of, I kind of fed a lot to you right quick, but. Here. Well, I'm honored to, to be a part of your team and thank you so you much bet. for taking your time. I'm anxious to, show this to my colleagues you bet. i'm looking forward to not only the reaction but the way they use this information 
once your product is ready to be manufactured and sold uh, commercially. Yep. And uh, and that's coming real soon. Yeah, no, it's coming. It's all coming, happening fast. Oklahoma happened yesterday. So uh, brushbullet.com is kind of the spot to go to to, yep. to stay up to speed. And um, You've already got your EPA label. And Oklahoma's already approved it. Yep, so Texas is pending. New Mexico yep. will be before yep. long. And then next year we'll expand past that. Yep. So we're just getting everybody, the government's always delaying us and we're getting a late start. But so br that's why important is go to brushbullet.com and sign up. And so you stay up to speed of where we're at. If you're interested, it's something that uh, that floats your boat. And so it's, um, yeah, thank you for coming to the Mendota you Ranch. Bet. We'll see you. Thank you. All Appreciate right. it.